All right. Uh, we're back at school. A certain restlessness always pervades the air the day of school before the weekend. But today was even livelier than usual. Karak. Smash. Yay! Bridge breaking! My bridge finally broke! Oh wait, I thought we were making bridges, not breaking bridges. You're not supposed to want to bridge a bridge to break, dummy! Looks like we have our last two contestants, Atlas and the Lyric Twins. Oh, that's pretty gutsy design, Aid. Suspension bridges are tricky to build. I guess you've done your fair share of research too. Indeed, though the tension cables that suspension bridges utilize were known for their highly efficient weight to low bearing ratio, working with them had been a quite great source of headache throughout the day. Well, looks like you went with a trust bridge, a pretty safe choice with a risk taking lyric trends. I mean, it's all about the fundamentals when it comes to this kind of thing. Eh, it's already quite clear at this point who the winners will be. Wonder what kind of prize we'll be receiving. Are you sure you want to declare victory so prematurely? It'll make your upcoming loss sting much more, you know. Just as the two of us square off and start laying down the trash talk, Triss suddenly belches loudly, completely ruining the mood. <laughs> Triss? Ah, could you be any more uncool? In the final, uh, in the final stage, we will simultaneously add weights to each bridge at regular intervals until we get the last bridge standing. Are the finalists ready? The class cheers as the promised time arrives at last. Let's do this. Me and Tris will be the ones taking home the win today. The only thing you'll be taking home is the remnants of your trust. Who will be the ones to claim today's special prize? Would it be the plucky lyric twins or the cunning at least? The time has come to determine the winner of today's bridge construction contest. So I guess it is, yeah. I was thinking maybe like they would make an actual bridge, but I'm I, like, you know, actual like full scale bridge, but maybe not. That's 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 too much work for just like a bunch of kids, obviously. So it really is just like a model bridge, right? Like a smaller one. Anyway, this is it. The final showdown. The final showdown. Three of us. Uh, watch over our bridge intently as intimidating new masses are added to our already bulging payloads. Each time they successfully withstand the mounting pressure, our breaths of relief resound through the tense classroom, which had fallen unnervingly silent compared to its previous commotion. Methodically, slowly, our bridges are placed under such duress the frames begin to deform from the strain. Time seems to slow to a crawl as a foreboding feeling that the upcoming wait will be the moment of truth grips me. Then, just as the wait in question is added, mm, ah, the sound of splintering wood echoes through the air as someone's bridge finally gives in. Who is it? Shocked silence swelled up within the room at that deciding instant. A single voice spoke. A conclusion has been reached. The winner is... The Lyric Twins! Ah. The room explodes in cheers and cries of the decoration of the victor. No! Masaka! I gaze down in disbelief upon the remnants of my sweet toil. Creation and destruction. Such transient beauty. I knew it could have come, it could have come to this and yet it still wounds me. With the swagger of an undisputed champion, Kalia utters the ultimate words of victory. GG, easy, no re. As a decisive winners, would you care to elaborate on your success to the class, Kalia? What do you think was the most important thing to keep in mind in regards to design decisions? Uh, there's one thing that should have been the center of focus. It was the rule that all bridges must be under a certain weight limit. Though your bridge really did have a sturdy weight to low barrier ratio aid, it didn't approach the weight limit that was given for the contest. Well, I noticed that as well, but it was difficult for me to do anything about it. Well, that's because suspension bridges are tough to reinforce after their first build. It's hard for you to do much with the wiggle room you end up with if it doesn't reach the cap right away. I see. Then can you tell us why you two chose the design that you did? Well, Tris and I decided that a truss bridge was the best design for taking advantage of the limit. Truss bridges are made 
almost all out of triangles, which are the simplest and strongest shape. Triangles are strong because they're hard to deform, like if you push on a corner of a square you can easily turn into another shape like a rhombus, right? But if you put a single diagonal bar inside the square and basically turn it into two triangles, it becomes really hard to change its shape. Also, since triangles are the simplest shape with only three sides, it's easy to reinforce a truss bridge. The triangle is an indeed a central building block in construction. It appears you're learning much from your father, Altoon Al Al Lirit. Hmm. I guess we're getting a bit of like a en bridge engineering uh, lesson here. And also, interesting, yeah, interesting. Altoon Lirit. Is he like a... I don't know, I assume he's also like an engineer as well? I guess their father is an engineer. The church did a good job trimming weight off parts that we didn't need. We used a lot of smart tricks like using the smallest amount of glue possible to connect the bridge parts. This was about done by using a dab of glue and binder clips to make sure it attached strongly. At the end of the day, the project was just all about milking as much as you could out of the bridge weight limit. Wow, you two make such a cool team when you work together. It's definitely why you won. As much as it pains me to concede defeat, I cannot, can't deny their groundwork was impressively well thought out. I guess my bridge couldn't handle the suspense. I'll play you two. Hmm. I'm pretty sure our bridge could hold even more if we wanted to. Perhaps wanting to test her point, Triss reaches out and gingerly wraps their bridge with uh, his knuckle, causing it to instantly collapse. Oops. Ah, it broke. Uh, not even close, baby. Edging over to block the scene of her body, Kalia gives Triss a stomp to the foot for good measure as he stands dumbfounded with his hand still suspended in midair. Somehow I feel really tired all of a sudden. I guess in reality it was a bit of a close match because the bridge was about to kill over as soon as they even put like a little bit of weight on uh, the Lyric Twins bridge. Anyway. While losing on the Cups of Glory makes me somewhat salty, I have to admit their methods was on, were on point. This goes to show the value of being taught by someone with experience and we're simply reading about it in the book. As promised, I will now award you to your prize. The light movement characteristics, or with light movement's characteristic to handling something delicate, Mr. Nero unveils something from his valise and lowers it into Tristan's hands. Murmurs of awe could be heard as the class hurriedly crowded around an object in question. What is it? This is an ornamental hair clip created from the blazing orange feathers of the phoenix oriole, a species that have gone extinct since the fire of collapse. Hmm. Oh, it's like it's on fire! Burning! Burning up! Mr. Niles always gives the coolest things. Hmm. But while the class was clearly enraptured, the person alone seemed detached from the clamor. A person whose reaction you expect to be yelling at Tris to let her see it already. But instead she gazes on wordlessly from a distance. You know, I mean... Like the... Like, uh, wait, what was it? It's like on fire. Blazing orange feathers. Eh, I don't know. Like fire of collapse. You know, considering what she went through, I don't know if it's... Well, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know exactly what Kalja is thinking. Hmm. However, Triss doesn't fail to notice this. Taking the feathered ornament in hand, he sidles up to his sister with an indiscreet motion, flips it onto her head. Hmm. Okay. Now what are you doing all of a sudden? But Triss just smiles dumbly in response. Hmm. <laughs> You remember, Triss? The bedtime story she once told us. The story of the rainbow crow. Without a hint of hesitation, Triss nods. You know, right? Even though it wasn't the truth, she wanted, us to let, uh, she wanted to let us know of a happy ending. And that's why we have to... With all we've got, we have to. A girl who couldn't take hold of anything even as it lay right before her and a boy who couldn't make his unspoken heart heard. It was a scene that captured the essence of a relationship between the Lyric twins. Hmm. I assume they're talking about mother? Their mom is also dead? A lot of dead moms here, if, it's, if that's the case. You know, and maybe, the, maybe it's because the feathers reminded her 
of uh, of her mother, and that's why she was a little bit speechless there. Just as Kalia acted as Triss's voice when he could not voice himself, Triss acted as Kalia's hands when she could not reach out. It was a nuanced bond one would never guess at with how they were always messing around with each other. Oh, I did it, Triss. Don't get too smug, though. This is just the beginning. Smiling faintly, they lightly bump heads for the forehead five. <laughs> Not so hard, dummy. <laughs> uh, it's somehow it's really heartwarming. Me too. Forehead five. Blah! It appears that in her enthusiasm to join their forehead five session, the Lorona missile has knocked the little twins out of commission. Oof. Wow, why don't you ever give Big Sis Lorona her forehead fives? Not fair. Nah. I think the answer to that question is self-evident. Sibling love is not something to be underestimated. Kalia, Triss, they make me proud. They've come such a long way from the dark place they were two years ago. Hmm. Alright class, though it's been an eventful day, it's not over yet. We have quite a bit to clean up. Everything has to be squeaky clean if you want to get to the real fun. An air of unrest pervaded the room as students ran about, tidying things up to the best of their ability. But the reason was far from being because everyone was anticipating being let out for the day. Rather, everyone was looking forward to stay as long as they possibly could. Hmm. What a subversion. Usually, yeah, kids want to just leave the school, but what? what is uh, Mr. Narao, what is he going to do? Now, the moment that you've been all been waiting for. With uh, Irwina at his side, Mr. Narao gestures over their iconic release. Games day! Hooray! They gotta play games. Everyone shouts in chorus as Irwina flips open the valise. A flurry of balloons flood out all at once, blanketing the floor of the school. Balloons? Not even a ceiling was spared as dozens of helium-filled ones flew into the air. The thing was really living up to his reputation as a whole to another dimension. It really is like a, I guess, a bag of, uh, a bag of holding. For today's game, we'll be playing a special version of Capture the Flag, inspired by an event yesterday that none shall speak of. The class will be divided into two teams of players. Each player will have a balloon tied around their waist that signifies their life. If that balloon is popped, such as by an opposing team member, you will be counted as being slain. After your balloon is popped, you cannot rejoin the game until you return to your pain base and quarantine the balloon from your team's allotted stockpile. Their objective is to force the enemy team to deplete their balloon supply while protecting your own. It's kind of like a team deathmatch. Well, well, team deathmatch as well as a flag, apparently. Additionally, each team, ba uh, team base will have a special flag that can be captured by an enemy team. A successful capture means that the opposing team must pop 10 of the balloons in their stockpile. Hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to know? What do we get for winning? More rapt at attention than any other lecture he could ever hope to give, the class screams out in unison. Well, first off, a team will be counted as losing if all the balloons worn and stored inside are popped. A losing team must accept a punishment of inhaling helium until their voice becomes squeaky. Once that is done, the other team gets the exclusive right of dictating what must be voiced during that duration. Everyone quivered at the possibility of being forced to endure such humiliation. <laughs> but again, I guess Mr. Narao got inspired though by our little prank. Yet at the same time, there's no denying the tantalizing prospect of reveling in the shame of the defeated. I will now announce the teams. After Mr. Narao finishes assigning the teams, I quickly survey what we have to work with. On my team, the blue team were Tristan, Lorona, and Oletta, along with Lemmy and Annabelle. I vote to make Aid our team captain. The moment we assemble, Lorona immediately. Uh, the moment we assemble, Lorona immediately makes that suggestion. Looking around, I see everyone nodding in approval. I'll leave it to me. I nod back, emboldened by everyone's unwavering confidence in me. For most of my thoughts were how to deal with the red team's aces, Kalia and Rona. One might think our team would be at adventures against the armless Kalia and unseeing Erwina, but they would be far from correct. Kalia was unmatched uh, 
as a speed demon that could run circles around us without getting caught, with her no um, mobility allowing her to switch between attacking and defending quickly. Hmm. Uh, she's like a dexterity based build. The only thing that gated her was she needed team support to secure objectives. As for Uena, I was convinced she was a bat or something because when she got heated up, she moved more like someone she could, uh, someone who could see an additional dimension rather than nothing at all. Uena's hmm. physical cap capabilities were also out of this world, with there being little doubt she could take anyone in the street one on one. With that being said, she was the other extreme from Kalia, being unable to maneuver around the battlefield too well with her vision impairment. Though her anti-personnel were peerless, she lacked offensive presence in regards to wind conditions like raiding stockpiles and capturing flags, meaning we likely f uh, find her on base defense. As for our team, we had Triss, a slower but more prudent departure from Kalia, whose aggressive nature and quickness made him ideal for blitzing. Naleta, on the other hand, was cool-headed and resilient, with her sluggish speed making her more suited to holding down the fort. Lastly, Lorona didn't have any noteworthy strengths on her own, but her aptitude for working on a team was difficult to overstate. She was always, uh, she always seemed to have a good, uh, good nose for covering teammates when they got themselves in the pitch, uh, which made her synergize as well with risk takers like Triss and Kalia. After breaking down our strengths and weaknesses, I assembled a strike team of three consisting of Lorona, Triss, and me, with Noletta, Annabelle, and Lemmy making up the base defense team. Everyone knows their role, right? Let's go out there and do some damage. You know, it's a little, a little, uh, I guess, disappointing that this is just is a, a visual novel. I wish you, this was like a little mini game actually you could play. I imagine like a Fire Emblem style like tactics game that you could just simply pay, uh, play. Uh, during this section with the capture the flag sort of thing, I don't know. But anyway. Breaking from our huddle with a battle cry, I look over at the red team to see how they're faring. Just to confirm, the balloons are positions around everyone's lower back, correct? Okay. And that's right, just give it a nice kick and it should go pop. Hmm. I guess, yeah, Erwina is asking that question so she'll know where to attack. A toothy grin could be seen on Kalia's face as she's warmed up by kicking the air around with what would be someone's eye level. Hmm. Well, that's someone, uh, something to look forward to. Who's ready to win? Turning back to my team, I stretch my hand into the air to rally them. We are! Wow! Morale was already skyrocketing through the roof. Unable to contain our energy any longer, we rush outside the school building to set up base for the upcoming clash. As we do, I begin to give up more detailed directives regarding our lineup. Tactical command of base defense will fall on Noletta. Noletta, the flag is stockpiled are separate locations, so make sure at least one person is guarding each at all times. Assign the quickest person the pressure relief should one location get focused down. Okay. This measure was necessary since I'd be concentrating my attention on directing the strike team. Tell us what to do, Noletta. We won't let them through! I will never remember who Lemmy and Annabelle are because they don't have character sprites. So... <laughs> uh, Triss, I want you to be on the strike team's vanguard. Don't make any attempts on the objectives unless I order it. Just concentrate on picking someone off from their base defense. Once you poke a hole in their enemy's defenses, I'll direct how we push in. Mm, so he's like the, the scout unit. Triss shivers with excitement as he takes a deep breath and nods. The Loritz thrive under the high pressure of spearheading assaults, jumping on opponents the moment they show the window of vulnerability. It was very much a high-risk uh, reward form of approach, which is why the support savvy Lorona was invaluable for safety, uh, safely securing any leverage we generated. Lorona, be sure to stick close to Triss so you can follow up on his takedowns and back him up if he gets blindsided. Okay. Be prepared to commit a full-on assault at my signal. After going over defensive con uh, conti uh, conti uh, contingencies, should our base be overrun, I turned to survey the battlefield. Our strike team was highly concentrated one, 
Rather than spreading out our attackers, it aimed to overwhelm and spill, spill into one section of the enemy's base. As such, it was good for sur surgical strikes and maintaining offensive momentum should even a single defensive rampart fall. And a steamroll the competition. The main reason I selected this team composition was because it was well equipped at avoiding Arona and attacking the areas she wasn't defending. This comp did have a share of weaknesses though. It was easier for the enemy to surround us and had weak ambient background presence for deterring attacks or relieving pressure on our own base. A lot depended on Leto's base defense to hold the line for this strategy to be successful. <laughs> you know, really just, this just really just reminds me of like a military operation. I wonder, uh, I wonder if the refugees had a similar, you know, strategy during the Masters Revolution, maybe. I don't know. Upon completing our preparations, we line up to face the Red Team's camp. Seeing that both sides are ready for action, Mr. Norrell lifts his hand to announce the commencement of the game. One last thing before we begin. There is a trump card hidden somewhere on the battlefield. Hmm. Before his hand descends though, a devilish smile plays over Mr. Rao's face as he inserts a sudden addendum to the game. Whoever discovers this trump card will be granted the power advantage. If you find your team on the verge of defeat, search for this trump card to turn the tide of battle. That's our teacher for you, adding a wild card right as the game is about to begin to generate the maximum amount of hype. Your only hint is as follows, look through the sky to find the pure purpose of this school. Hmm. Look through the sky to find the pure purpose of the school. I can imagine it now. That's probably the uh, the winning factor. Finding the trump card and using it to to win the game. What is it though? Like maybe like a ranged weapon or hmm. The tension saturated its battlefield stirred at Mr. Nero's cryptic words. I mean, look in the sky. I mean, we see clouds, right? The pure purpose of this school. It's learning, isn't it? But what is it? I don't know what that means. How does that relate to a location? Oh well. Maybe Adelise will figure that out. Anyway, now begin. The battle has started. Cutting that tension with a grand arc of his hand, Mr. Nara releases us at last. There's no time to uh, dawdle on Mr. Narao's riddle. Almost immediately, Triss explodes into action with Lorona and me following close behind. Crossing up the opponents that had advanced to attack, he weaves an oblique pattern through the enemy formation and crashes aggressively against their defenses. Pop! Tripping up one of the defenders that moved forward to meet him, Triss opens up an opportunity for Lorona to follow up and pop their balloon. One defender left manning the red team's flag while the stockpile appeared to be unguarded, an unwise choice. Though the name of the game is Capture the Flag, in this version, a flag is only worth 10 balloons. Given enough time and personnel, you can pop, pop all of the team's balloons if you attack their stockpile, making it a far much valuable objective. Oh, I guess, I don't know, I guess there's no rules against that. You can simply just destroy their resources at the root instead. Charge the stockpile! I order an audacious charge to take advantage of our lightning fast breach of the enemy's defenses. Diving deep into the heart of the enemy camp, we eliminate the final defender by drawing him into a pincer as he hastily rushes to intercept us from his post on the flag. Pop as many of the stockpile balloons as you can. How devilish at least. Just as Triss reaches for the enemy balloon though, something strange happens. A rod extends from the cluster of red balloons, lightly tapping Triss on the side. Like a sprung trap, a hand erupts from within, scattering the balloons in its wake. Oh no! They, uh, they, they predicted our ambush. Catching and redirecting his momentum with practice ease, it drives Triss straight into the ground. It was Rowena! But just as she lashes out to finish him, wah! Yeah! <laughs> Lorona managed to heave him out of the way before collapsing to the ground herself. Oh crap, I had predicted that Lorona would be on base defense. Why hadn't I considered the possibility of an ambush? Our offensive's momentum had stopped completely in the face of our veritable opponent. You shall not pass. <laughs> well, a reference. 
With a declaration conveying absolute conviction, Irwina pounds her cane into the ground. <laughs> it, really, <laughs> it really is. It really is a reference to the series, the, the, the ring thing, the Lord of the Rings, the Ring of the Lords. Anyway. A light touch for that thing was all she needed to confirm your position and take you down. That Triss had survived was a miracle. No matter how I looked at it, we were thoroughly outmatched. Taking our one ahead on was an option and we wouldn't be long before the other defenders acquired new balloons and reinforced her, turning this into a losing battle. Retreat and go for the flag! Recalling we had a limited guard, I shouted at our team to redirect our efforts. But Arwana was the first to react to my order. Dashing forward to catch us, her rod chases after Triss and Arwana as they desperately try to scramble around her. They can't get away without help. Eyeing Arwana's movements, I circle around to get an angle on her back before uh, lunging forward with a deliberately loud stomp. Mm -hmm. Reacting with lightning speed, Arwana swivels around and checks my motion, her rod hovering mere inches from my chest. It was no exaggeration to say the radius around the woman's person was a no-man's land. If I had misjudged the distance and stopped any shorter, I'd be a goner right now. It's very anime, you know. Realizing Tris and Lerona had used the distraction to peel off, I promptly disengaged as well to make a run for the flag. Ruby won, now! Interrupt, uh, interpreting Erwana's cry as a panic signal, I hastily grabbed the red flag and started to fall back with the rest of the strike team. Watch out, Aid! Before I can even clear the enemy camp though, a blur of movement flits in the corner of my eye. Thanks to Lerona's warning, I manage to duck just as a foot sails through the air and threatens to lock off my head. Oh no. It was Kalia with her customary lack of chill. <laughs> Utilizing her trademark speed, she had rotated back to defend in the blink of an eye. As Kalia advances to follow up on her whiff, Trisk jumps in to intervene, tumbling to the ground with her in the process. At that moment, two red team members swoop in from behind and try to finish Trisk off as he grapples with Kalia on the ground. Lorona cuts in to shield him, but it's clear she's outnumbered. The red team's base defense had recovered and was attacking from behind. With the red offense cutting us off from the front and the red defense pressuring us from behind, we were completely surrounded. Go, Wade. We'll hold them off. Grasping that we can't avoid taking casualties, I abandon my teammates and take off with due speed. I keep my eyes peeled as I approach our flag, holding ground where the capture can be solidified if I manage to make it. I mean, I guess if we catch the flag, we uh, get to destroy 10 balloons on their side. How many balloons do they have anyway in their stockpile? I don't know if they gave us a number. That's when I perceive two number closing uh, two or uh, two people closing in on me from both flanks at once. A pincer attack. It was the rest of the red team's assault squad. Judging they'd catch me before I make it back home, I juke to the side at the last moment, causing them to skid off course. They quickly regain balance before resuming their pursuit of me, though. There's no way I can outrun them while encumbered by this flag, and I'm still too far away. At this rate, my comrades' sacrifices will be in vain. No, oh, no. Just as the duo leaps at me though, a strong gust blows past my face. A figure had placed itself between me and the encroaching enemies, utterly laying out one, utterly laying one out and stopping the other one dead in their tracks. It was Noletta. The opponent in her grasp crumbles spectacularly as she overpowers him, allowing the two under her command to neutralize the arrested enemy's balloons. It looks like she made the decision to abandon base defense and to converge on and secure the flag. Lorona and Triss are down. The red team is mobilizing to launch a counterattack. Oh, hold them back. Hurry, aid. Nodding quietly on Lorona's back, I waste no time in leaving my companions behind, placing my trust in them as I stand as they stand their ground. More sacrifices. Upon arriving at our flag holding area, I plant the enemy flag to the ground and shout out, "Red flag capture complete." The blue team has successfully captured the red team's flag. As stipulated in the rules, I will now proceed to pop the ten, uh, 10 of the balloons in the red team's stockpile. As I turn back to confirm the situation, I feel my jaw dropping in disbelief at what I see. Elia was hurting down the battlefield at, uh, uh, hurling down the battlefield at breakneck speed, which wasn't unusual in itself. 
It was the fact that a certain someone was telling behind her that, that defied our expectation. Ruby 1 commencing delivery of the package. Aqua 2 o'clock. Get a Marwana. Planting her feet, Kalia uses her body as a fulcrum to pivot and swing her package out ahead of her. With one hand gripping Kalia's dangling sleeve, Awena reaches out with her rod to confirm Lemmy's location before sweeping his legs out from under him with blinding swiftness. Then after pulling Kalia in to land the killing stomp, Awena lets Kalia propel her to the, her next target in a deadly dance that rapidly mouths down the rest of Noletta's base defense team. Oh, it's like something lifted straight out of a nightmare. The freedom that Kalia's slack sleeve offered in conjunction with her blazing speed had allowed her for a scenario that I never imagined. The rap rapid deployment of Wanda from the front lines, as if she's like a secret weapon. Capturing the flag and resetting the neutral would have granted us a war of attrition where the red flag would be pressured to commit to disadvantaged offensives. We had expended too many resources in pursuit of that objective. They were employing their most powerful axe asset at the mo at the optimal time, but we were still weak from our blitz gambit. This Kalia Orwena delivery combo was the perfect counteroffensive for punishing our overextension. Looking over our stockpile, I catch sight of Tris and Lorona attempting to tie on new balloons. With the two red defense members, uh, before I had followed them and were popping balloons left and right as they attempted to revive. Hey, spawn! Don't spawn kill. Don't camp our spawn. We're getting camped. Before young Lorna dies on the way as Kalia and Lorna arrive to capitalize on the red team's stalling. As the only one alive, I can only watch on powerlessly as the red team ignored our flag and went straight for the throat. Ah, uh -huh, our, our like initial plan used on us instead. When Naleta and her team returned to try and revive, Lorona and Triss managed to slip out with balloons and rejoin me. But even then, we don't have the forces to retake our lost ground. Contending with the unstoppable Kalia and the Werner Juggernaut was daunting enough, but we also had a numbers disadvantage. What should we do? The hope seemed to be fading from Lorona's eyes, but giving up now wasn't an option. We're abandoning base. Wipe up, wipe out their stockpile. We can't defend, then we'll just, uh, rather we, if, we, if we can't defend, then we'll just have to strike back. Red had committed all their resources to an all-out offensive, so their own stockpile was wide open. Responding uh, to a crippling counterattack with a counterattack of our own was a desperate measure, but well, this is the only option we have right now. It's kind of like a, uh, well, I mean, if we end up just destroying each other, for one, it's like a metaphor for war, but also it's kind of like a period victory, isn't it, you know? It really is just like uh, destroying each other's stockpile, it's like... Uh, 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 like destroying like all of our resources all at the same time, you know. Nothing left if we end up just uh, attacking each other like in such a fashion. Nodding at me grimly, the blue strike team takes off to clean up the rest of the balloons uh, in red stockpile. On the way, we encountered two, the two red offensive members that Noleta had previously subdued, but they wisely keep their distance, opting instead to regroup with the rest of their team. When we arrived, we managed to finish the job quickly with 10 having already been eliminated from our flag capture, but, e but even then the situation looked bleak. It looked bleak. With both stockpiles exhausted and all objectives rendered obsolete, the red team turns their flags on us. I guess, yeah, the game isn't over though. Even if their stockpiles and our stockpile is the uh, is gone, we still have the balloons on our backs, so it turns into a instant death match. That's what it is now. The odds were an overwhelming three versus six, with the red team being at full power. Oh no! Taking full advantage of their numbers, the red team spreads out in a fan formation, seizing comprehensive control of the battlefield as the game enters its final phase. Slowly but surely, they press our diminutive group into a corner with safe and systematic skirmishes, giving us no chance to fight back. Though we were managing to ward off the combined attacks of Kalia's offensive team and Oana's defensive team, we were growing tired under the continued harass. We had no relief options compared to the red team who could alternate fresh bodies to keep up the siege. <laughs> Again, this is just more like military talk, you know? It's useless aid. Your team's morale has fallen too low. You cannot win. 
Kalia taunts us as we gradually run out of the space to back up. But surrender was not an option. Even if we have to crawl, we'll never give up. There's still a way, we just need to find the trump card. I tried to rally my comrades behind that final shard of hope, but exhaustion was beginning to creep into even my voice. Huh, find it if you can. Even if such a thing actually existed, there's no way to save you from these odds. Laughing like a despotic tyrant, Kalia continues to constrict our forces around us. <laughs> Lorana cries out in fatigue as she barely manages to escape with her life after warding off a pincer attack on our flanks. One last thing before we begin, there's a trump card! Heaving deeply, Triss drags himself off the ground after being, after being driven back by a vicious three-man charge. Whoever discovers this will get a deus ex machina and totally win the battle, just find it. Is there anything we can do? Your only hint, look through the sky to find the pure purpose of this school. I, I have no idea. Personally, I have no idea how to answer that hint. Hmm. The sky, look at the sky. Time seems to slow to a crawl as I close my eyes, letting the tension leak from my body with a slow exhalation. Exhalation? Exhalation? An unending cycle of being broken down over and over again no matter how many times I try to stand back up. Giving up before this hopeless situation would be the natural thing to do. There's no way out of this. Nobody would blame me for succumbing to these powerless thoughts. But even then, there's a way. I choose to struggle. And then the, the power-up theme plays and then we figure out the truth and stuff. And the, for the power of friendship, we defeat our enemies. The heat begins to build up behind my shut eyelids as I voice my belief with unwavering conviction. And amidst the darkness stretching out before me, a single golden light was shining. Reaching out, I seize that golden radiance in hand and force my eyes open. I see it! Wow! The moment vision returns to me, I perceive the blue team's stockpile at the far left of the battlefield and the blue flag at the far right. The path forward was clear. To me, blue team! Nini, I figured out what the trump card is. Bellowing in the firmest voice I can muster, I motion to our left in the direction of the blue team's stockpile. Break through to that location at all costs. Hope flickers in the eyes of my comrades as they're shown a light beyond the edge of despair they've been teetering on for so long. For the motherland! Hura! Summoning every last ounce of strength left in their bodies, the last remaining blue team members charge forward with desperate ferocity. What? Stop them! Don't let them get there no matter what! Surprised by a sudden fierce resistance, Kalia orders the red team to pull back and tighten their formation to prevent us from slipping through. Barreling through outstretched arms of multiple red interceptors, Tris penetrates deep into the enemy territory before B or before finally being snuffed out. Oh no, he's defeated. Yeah! <laughs> it really is. It really is. Ura! Well, the motherland! With a valiant cry, Lorona scatters the resulting pile up and carries us even deeper before succumbing to the ravenous hordes. However, as for me, instead of continuing down the path we had carved, I make a sharp right and beeline for the blue flag. Hmm. A feint? Though it pains me to use my comrades as a decoy, there's no better way to deceive your enemies than by deceiving your allies. Catching on to my diversion, uh, Kalia, who had been laying back to serve as a sweeper, breaks out into an all-out sprint to cut me off. At this rate, she'll block me off from the flag in time, if only barely. But that's fine. Just when our paths are about to overlap, I abruptly make another sharp right, letting her skid out of control by herself in front of the blue flag. A, a double faint? <laughs> Nani. A faint of a faint? Mustering all of my remaining strength, I race down the sideline to my true objective, a bystander watching over the game from midfield. Huh. I figured it out, Mr. Naro. Panting heavily, I double over and rest my hands on my knees as I try to catch my breath. Hold, Kalia, stand down. Mr. Naro gestures behind me as the sound of footsteps belatedly converges on our location. Aid, you said you figured it out? In that case, what is the trump card? After taking a moment to gulp down some air, I open my mouth to speak. 
Look through the sky to find the pure purpose of this school. Hmm. Taken as a whole, it leads nowhere. But when broken down, it all comes together. Taken as a whole, leads nowhere. But broken down, comes together. Uh, nope. Still no idea. What is it, at least? First, purpose of the school. I tried to think of something unique to the school at first, but when it comes down to the purpose of every school, it can be boiled down to one thing, right? Education, right? Learning, yeah. Learning. Indeed, it is as you say. Sometimes the closer you look, the less you see. After having the first of my thoughts confirmed in Mr. Naro, I continue. Next, look through the sky to find... On a representational level, what would you need to search for the sky? The first thing that comes to mind is wings. Wings? Okay. Sure. With those two conclusions, arriving the final clue from Pierre comes naturally. Is it? Is it naturally? Wings, learning, Pierre. Something that symbolizes purity. For example, the color white. I mean, okay. Narrow can be interpreted to mean white wings of learning. Oh. It's him. It's the teacher himself, I guess. The white wings of learning. The meaning of her name is Naro. The trump card is you, Nani. With not, a, with not a change in expression, Mr. Naro closes his eyes at my answer. I must say, the stunt you pulled to concentrate and displace the red team's formation was impressive. But instead of confirming my answer, he slowly circles around behind me and begins untying my balloon. Oh, could it be I was mistaken? With a crestfallen murmur, I drop my gaze to the ground. Rather than answer, answer me, though, Mr. Norell poses a question of his own. Tell me, child, do you know what a deus ex machina is? <laughs> that's what I was, yep, that's what I was referring to before. Puzzled, I tried to recall what, when, when I had read about it in Mother's Collection. God from a machine? It refers to a plot device in which an inextricable situation is solved by a sudden intervention. Could it be? I feel my, word, uh, my eyes widen as I look back up just in time to see Mr. Norell tying my balloon to his back. Call for me, and I shall come. With a flourish of his arm, Mr. Norell casts his coat to the wind and steps into the battlefield. Rejoice, blue team! I have come to avenge your fallen! <laughs> with an otherworldly roar, Mr. Norell surges forward with demonic speed. In the blink of an eye, he shreds two of the Red Offense's balloons to pieces before turning the bear down on Kalia. Wow. What in the world? I, f I fall back, Kalia. You can't take him. Quick on an uptick, o Arwina orders Kalia to turn tail. But before she can get far, Mrs. Norell catches up and ruptures the fragile air vessel, signifying her life with an impossibly swift and accurate strike. To think he could outspeed Kali in such a degree, even reading her attempt to juke him off, it was unbelievable. Yo, Mr. Naro! Woo! There's still help. Time to tip the scales by using our teacher to cheat. Well, I guess technically he's uh, still within the rules. Mr. Naro! No longer was his blue team quilling at the prospect of imminent defeat. Emboldened by the grand reversal, we cried in jubilation as our fighting spirits are restoked. This is for my teacher's pride! Letting out loose a blood curling howl, Mr. Norell sweeps through the bewildered red team as they scramble to stay alive. Old, old humanity! By introducing a single new element, we had completely turned the tables and regained the initiative. Was this the theory of a teacher that had been forced to endure helium induced humiliation in front of his own class? An irrecoverable death spiral, utter decimation. Before long, only one red team member remained standing. Father, you are acting childish. <laughs> Irwin's stoic figure stood as the last obstacle before Mr. Naro's ceaseless advance. Come and strike this childish father of yours. Uh, Come and strike down this childish father of yours, then. If it's you, there's no need to hold back. Coldly informing him she will not back down, Irwin manipulates a mechanism on her iconic, iconic rod and smashes it against the ground. Wow, we actually see the rod. It really, it really is like a super special final anime battle. With a sliding sound, the rod abruptly extends to a length exceeding her full height. Dauntless and unmoving, 
Uh, Owena brandishes the uninhibited tool before her, adopting the whole stance of a seasoned lancer. <laughs> a, a lancer? As such, like uh, in the Holy Grail War? Hmm? What's going on? You can do that? Everything rested on this duel between Owena and Miss Nerol. Dripping suspense, bleeding tension, as the two hardened combatants squared off against each other, a climactic gust blew through the battlefield, rustling the chilled air. Oh no! The moment the frozen air is disturbed, Mr. Nero lunges forward, precipitating the beginning of the end. Ha! Irina was quick to react, bringing her rod to bear with breathtaking speed. With a flurry of strikes, she walls off Mr. Nero's advance, forcing him to step back and block with shins and forearms. Pushing Mr. Nero off balance, Irina lifts her rod high into the air and brings it down with deafening force. Wow! But he manages to spin away at the last moment, barely escaping the devastating attack. This has become very anime. It's like it's, again, super anime battle. The ground. Where Irina's swift strike has stripped the ground, there was a massive gash in the earth as if it had been plowed by a cannonball. The class could only gape in disbelief. Nope, nope, nope. Content to sit safely on the sidelines, I shake my head gravely at the ongoing clash. Considering she had just ripped Mother Earth a new anus, wow, what a sentence. Considering she had just ripped Mother Earth a new anus, hmm, wow, Th that's a pretty good sentence, I gotta say. The, uh, the amount of control it would have been uh, taken to lightly nudge someone like she'd been doing till now was inconceivable. Mr. Nero is blocking it, barehanded. Go, Arena, you can do it. Believe, well, this is seriously on another level. Moving like cord lightning, Mr. Nero slips through a gap in Irona's zoning, closing the distance with a vicious roundhouse at the temple. <laughs> wow, it's just actually just, just literally, they are just really fighting. With a, uh, with a reed bordering on pre uh, pres presence? 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 Ir Irona steps precisely one half step to the side, striking the blow off course with a brisk adjustment of the Harad's back end. A flurry of punches, a squall of kicks, Mr. Nero follows up with a ground-shattering advance. If Mr. Nero's assault was unstoppable though, Irwina's poise was unbreakable. She slowly retreats as she deflects and evades Mr. Nero's attacks with measured movements, maintaining a fixed distance the entire time. Then, sensing an opening, Irwina abruptly releases her rod, lunging under an off-center strike and plunging her hand into Mr. Nero's gut with a counter-attack that sends him skeeting. He's one of hell of a brawler too. Is this, is this, is this what the content warning for was for? Depictions of extreme violence? Is this what it is? <laughs> Rather than using her superior range as a crutch, she was using it to limit Mr. Nero's options, setting the terms of close quarter combat CQC, in a way that favored her. Those of us uh, standing on the sidelines could only look on in stunned silence at what was unfolding before us. Our humble game of capture the flag has escalated to something far beyond the scope of our imagination. What we were witnessing could only be described as an epic fight to the death. Hmm, it seems you're quite motivated today. Though he did not flinch or clutch where he sustained damage, beads of sweat could be seen tracing down Mr. Nero's face. You have violated the integrity of children's, of the children's game by choosing to partake. I will not allow such an infringement to pass. I know, I know you were a prime collaborator in yesterday's prank. I'm not that heavy a sleeper unless certain incriminating conditions are met. Do not think you will be afforded any claim to righteousness. Hmm. You shall know the same indignity you brought upon me. Oh, I guess... I guess, uh... Mr. Nero has a bit of a... Of his own personal goal here. Getting his own daughter to also uh, get pranked by helium. Or I guess not pranked, but like, you know... Make her uh, inhale helium as well. The final clash, a dictate of certain defeat. Could his callous hands grasp the fruit of victory from the jaws of defeat? Hopeful prayers ran through the minds of the blue team as they gazed upon the form of the one who has shown them light in the sea of darkness. 
It seems you wish to suffer the same humiliation of yesterday once more, father. Allow me to grant that wish. The promise of certain victory, a decree of absolute penitence. Could her unseeing eyes capture a vision of salvation amidst the despair of sudden upheaval? Yearning pleas ran through the minds of the red team as they gazed upon the form of their last standing bastion. Light footsteps, regulated breaths, adopting a vastly different approach from before, Mr. Nero stealthily circles around Irwina. Futile. Muda. Muda Muda. Oops, I accidentally skipped that. In response, Irwina proactively seizes the attack with a broad crouching sweep. Forced to evade or risk being struck, Mr. Nero pulls away with a distinctly loud hop that restores the sensory information being deprived from Irina. With his position now ascertained, Irina pivots with her residual momentum, following up with a strike at Mr. Nero's unanchored knee. But with impossible deafness, he twists away, causing the attack to whiff by a small margin. Sa! See ya! <laughs> Battle cries followed a spirit that rang out to the beat of his footsteps like a war song. It was seemed to be the last resort of producing disruptive sounds to throw Irina off. Mr. Noel weaves an oblique pattern around Irina to strike at her flank. But Irina parries and counter -attack, uh, counters the attack with relative ease. Rather than misdirector, it was only giving her more to operate with. Yeah, just yelling at her probably doesn't help. It just gives away your location. Sha, sha. Even <laughs> even then, though, Miss Nero does not cease his cries. Miss Nero should be aware of Erwin's aptitude at processing sensory information more than anyone else. But why was he employing this strategy? Hmm. Maybe he has another trick in up his sleeve. Yeah. Over and over again, Mr. Nero continues to enact the same cycle despite his proven ineffectiveness. Then suddenly, Sir, yeah! Mr. Nero abruptly changes his cadence, catching Irona in the moment of vulnerability. Mm hmm. Caught her in a pattern, maybe. Realizing he has slipped into her defenses, Irona tries to bring her rod to bear, but Mr. Nero, uh, Pinions it mid stride and whirls powerfully, sending its slender form flying high into the sky. He had conditioned Arena to unconsciously follow the rhythm he established, switching it up at the last moment for the punish. Got baited. It's over. Owarida. Committing his entire being, Mr. Naro launches deep into what had been Arena's strictly controlled space and unleashes his ultra combo. He wards off Irina's attempt to parry, reaches around un and under her exposed back, and plants a decisive killing blow to her balloon. All of movement ceased as the deafening little burst resounded through the air. And a single breath could be heard as we stared awestruck at the grand conclusion. Hmm. It's my win. Mr. Nero smiles thinly as he lowers the hand that he dealt the finishing blow. Amazing, a full-grown adult beat up a bunch of kids. Three steps ahead of you. Nani? Wait a minute, that was Arona. Three steps ahead of you. Mm -mm. With the shrill sound of air being pierced, something descends from the sky and impales the ground behind Mr. Nero. Rupturing his balloon in the process. What? It was Arona's rod. When I knocked it away? Allow me to quote you, father. After your balloon has popped, you cannot rejoin the game until you return to your team base and acquire another balloon from your team's allotted stockpile. Since I launched my rod into the air before my balloon was popped, it counts as a valid kill, since I was still in the game when the action was completed. Is that, is that how it works? I don't know. <laughs> no way! Simultaneous checkmate. Is that even possible? Ah, Tristan just faints. Even that feeble parry was just a move. Uh, was just to move me into the proper position, wasn't it? Calculated. Now this means we both lose, father. You remember the rules you recounted to us? Uh, team would lose if all of all balloons worn and stored on the side are popped, and the losing team must accept punishment of inhaling helium. 
and the other team gets to dictate what they say, right? Well, the rules never stated there could only be one loser. Therefore, Ruana extends her hand to point slightly offset at her father. Accept your punishment with the rest of us. <laughs> I guess we're all going to inhale helium today. It really is like a mutual destruction. And that is the moral of war. When in war, there are no true winners, only losers. Anyway. <laughs> We could do nothing but uh, gob in astonishment the end result that Urana, uh, Urana had brought about. Well, that means both teams lose. But that also means both teams win, in a way, doesn't it? Wait, so everyone has to do the punishment? No way! A foolishness. I gladly relive yesterday if it grants me the gratification of watching you do the same. Oh, human nature. It's like, uh, you know... As long as you get revenge, it doesn't ha doesn't matter what happens to you, or something like that. Boldly accepting her scenario of mutually assured destruction, Mr. Nero proceeds to retrieve the helium balloon set aside for the purpose of punishing the losers. Nobody could have foreseen that everyone would end up losing, though. Are you ready, class? This is now a showdown of coming up with the juiciest things to make the other th side say. <laughs> now, what should we make them sing? Roguish suggestions and raucous chatter was had. But ultimately, eyes come rest upon Triss as he imitates a chicken pecking at the ground. <laughs> Actually, in a way, Triss doesn't, isn't really affected by the punishment, is he? He can't, well, he can't, he, it doesn't really affect him, the helium. What about animal sounds? Hey, let's make them maybe chicken. Bark. Cows, too. Moo. Make them bark. Woof, woof. Look, Naleta, you can do your favorite, your favorite, constipated cat noises. Hmm. Remember to put your heart into it, Naleta. Bully. No bully. Now then. Miss Nero turns back to Rowana after completing his distribution of healing balloons. Bear to recount the most shameful things, conceivable child. Or, yeah, the most shameful, shameful things conceivable, child. Okay, I can't, I, sometimes I read it wrong. Sometimes it's like, I feel like there should be a, a comma here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You will be groveling on the ground when I'm done with you, father. Such familial love. Even after their duels end, their competitive spirits were still burning as bright as ever. Let us begin then. Inhale your helium, everyone. You should recite everything the opposing team dictates for you as uh, to you for as long as your voice is affected. With unprecedented enthusiasm, everyone undoes the fastening on their balloon and inhales the gas with heaving gulps. And just like that, our festival of nonsensical noises began. Yeah, if you can imagine, this is everyone just has a squeaky voice. In fact, yeah, even on the other side. Like the other, the other side is telling the uh, the uh, each other what they're supposed to do, but even the even like the orders, the commands are just gonna sound silly, isn't it? And you know, this game so far is this visual novel so far is pretty silly. I thought there was like dark psychological themes, but I don't know. And I also I was also thinking the whole like capture the flag thing was like like uh, maybe like a um, reenactment, re you know, of the. Master's Revolution and the war and stuff, but maybe not. Maybe it really is just a silly game. Uh, 